All right, what's going on everyone out there on YouTube, NES Ruler, and welcome to a brand new review, and this time around we'll be checking out a film that was sent to me to review by Epic Pictures, and you can pick this up on Blu-ray at all your favorite online retailers. It is a film titled Tin Can. So Epic Pictures and Dread, Dread releases a lot of these Epic Picture films. Uh, Epic Pictures is a label that I've been aware of, you know, I picked up a whole bunch of their movies one year during one of their Black Friday sales. And they've released a whole bunch of really good stuff. Terrifier, uh, Circus of the Dead, uh, The Swerve, which is one of my favorite movies of last year, I think. It was last year. I saw it a couple years ago at a festival, but I think its official release was last year. So they released some really great stuff. And they released some really interesting stuff. Some stuff that really doesn't fancy me too much. But they do release some really interesting indie kind of films. And The Tin Can is definitely an interesting indie kind of film. So, sitting here watching this movie, this is one of the movies that you sit there and you think about for hours after you watch it. Trying to piece it together, what it's trying to say. Or even so much to say what its narrative is trying to say. I'm not saying it's totally confusing. But it's definitely one that I sat there scratching my head at the end of it. Because when I read this synopsis, I was like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. But it definitely goes into a uh, use your own imagination and your interpretation of what the narrative is. So we basically follow this scientist. She is uh, a scientist in this world that is being overrun by this deadly virus. Very, you know, particular to what was going on in our world a couple years ago. But she's a scientist trying to find a cure for this fungus infection. Basically what this fungus infection does, it uh, grasses onto your skin and it overtakes your body until you basically become this sea pea pod kind of thing of cells. It's really, really weird. So as time goes on, it starts to eat your whole body and you basically become this mesh of cells and other things. And basically... One day she finds a cure for this virus and she basically, as she leaves the lab, she gets knocked out and she wakes up in this tin can. And basically what we learn is that this company that she worked for, they came up with a solution where they were able to put people into hibernation, if you want to say wealthy people into hibernation. Uh, people who were infected before they would put them into hibernation to slow down the rapid state of the fires mutating them into this pea pod kind of creature. And people who had a lot of money who wanted to try and ride this virus out until a solution was found was also put into these tin cans. And basically she wakes up in this tin can, very claustrophobic, and on every side of her is one of her co-workers, surprisingly. And she can't see out of this tin can besides this little vent in the middle of it. And when she looks out this fence, she sees these metallic, like C-3PO kind of uh, figures who are taking care of these tin cans and the people inside of them. And when people ultimately wake up and succumb to this virus, they get rid of them, they dispose the bodies. And I think these... C-3PO kind of creatures is really where uh, I get lost with the film. Um, who they are and what are their purposes are beyond the fact of disposing of these newly deceased bodies. And what happened to the world as a whole? Like, did it totally shit the bed or what happened? You don't really know. And the first like hour and 15 minutes of this film, you're basically in this claustrophobic tin can with our main scientist lady friend and it's only towards that mark that she is able to escape and you see a little bit more of what's going on in this lab that they're basically in being controlled by these metallic c-3po kind of uh people in suits and i'm not going to get into it too much there but it's really interesting i'm not going to say that i didn't hate the film i i appreciate low independent films who are able to take a really interesting idea and piece it into uh, an interesting narrative with the budget that they had. Um, you can definitely tell it was low budget, but they definitely did try their best. Michael Ironside is in this for, I don't know, two and a half minutes tops. Not even that, probably two minutes. But he's in there. 
He plays one of these co-worker kind of people, but I respect the, the attempt, and it does succeed on having a very claustrophobic feel to it as we spend a lot of this movie inside of this, you know, tin can with this uh, scientist that we follow. So it's a really interesting end-of-the-world kind of a film. It's similar. I've seen other films that are pretty similar to this movie, but I feel like this one tries to do a little bit something different, makes the audience think a little bit. And like I said, I completely get a no, but I, I did appreciate the watch. It's broken up into two chapters, so I think it, it tries to tell two different pieces to the story with these two different chapters. And ultimately, I feel like it's one that you have to watch two to three to four times to completely piece together and fully appreciate this movie. So I feel like if I watched it again, I would probably appreciate it more than I did on my initial viewing. But, you know, it's it's shot in a very interesting aspect ratio. It was shot in a 3 by 2 aspect ratio, which is very strange. You don't see too many things shot in 3 by 2 You know, most things are either 16 by 9 of course. But... Uh, it's a very weird aspect ratio. It doesn't fill up the complete screen, but you know you have just a little bit of black bars on either side. Very uh, weird stylistic choice, I feel like, to uh, try to get the claustrophobic kind of feel uh, hammered in even more. Special features, you got a commentary track with the director, the producer, and the writer. Uh, the making of the film, a music video. The score is quite good. And this release has two um, music videos of two songs that were used in this film. And it's just a basic release here, nothing too much. You got your disc, which your cover art that's similar. So nothing too much here when it comes to the release. But another really just interesting film from, uh, from Canada, from the good folks up north in Canada. So that is my review of Tin Can. Pick this up, like I said, from Epic Pictures on all your favorite online retailers on Blu-ray. So thanks, everybody, for watching. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, you can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash NESRuler22. Hope everybody is doing well, and I shall talk to you guys soon. See you guys.